Distinguish between simple and compound time signatures. A simple time signature means a regular note, not a dotted one, gets the beat, such as a quarter note, half note, or whole note. In a compound time signature, dotted notes get the beat, such as a dotted quarter note, dotted half note, and so on. The main way to identify a compound meter is to look at the upper number. It must be 6 or higher and a multiple of 3. Following the rule of compound meters, 6 quarters is a compound meter because there's a 6 on top, which is multiple of 3. 3 eighths, however, is a simple meter because the top number is less than 6. Identify what note gets the beat by looking at the bottom number. The bottom number in a simple meter tells you which note gets the beat. For instance, 4 indicates the quarter note gets the beat, while 2 indicates a half note gets the beat. In compound meters, it's a little more complicated, as you could describe it two ways. You could say that a dotted note gets a beat, but you could also say that the bottom note tells you what division of notes gets the beats, for instance, four quarters time is a simple time signature. The four on the bottom tells you the quarter note gets the beat. Six eighths time, on the other hand, is a compound time signature. The eight tells you a dotted quarter note gets the beat, however, you could also say that a single beat is composed of three eighth notes the same length as a dotted quarter note. Figure out how many beats are in a measure. The top number tells you how many beats each measure gets. In simple meters, just read the number to get the beats per measure. In compound meters, divide the number by 3 to get the beats per measure, for instance, 2 quarters has 2 beats per measure and 3 quarters has 3 beats per measure, which are both simple meters. With compound meters, 6 eighths has 2 beats per measure, while 9 twelfths has 3 beats per measure. Learn the basic note values. When discussing note values, you generally assume four quarters time because that is the most common time signature. In that case, the quarter note is the one that's filled in with a stem, and it gets one beat. Half notes are two beats and are hollow with a stem, while whole notes are just a hollow circle equal to four beats. Eighth notes are half a beat, and they have a filled-in circle with a little flag at the top right of the stem, though sometimes they are connected to each other at the top. Rests also get beats, the same as their note equivalents. A quarter rest almost looks like a stylized three, while a half rest is a little rectangle on top of the middle line. A whole rest is a little rectangle below the second line from the top, and an eighth rest is a stem with a little flag to the left at the top. Work out the number of beats in the measure. When looking at a piece of music, you'll see five lines running parallel to each other across the sheet. In those lines, you'll see vertical lines that divide the music into measures. One measure is the space between two vertical lines. To find the beats in a measure, count the notes using a quarter note as the basic beat, write the number of beats each note gets above the beat, then add them all together for the measure. For instance, if you have one quarter note, a half note, and a quarter rest, you have four beats because the quarter note is one beat, the half note is two beats, and the quarter rest is one beat. If you have four eighth notes, two quarter notes, and a whole note, you have eight beats. The four eighth notes equal two beats, while the two quarter notes equal two beats and the whole note is four beats. If you have two half notes and two quarter notes, that's five beats as each half note equals two beats and the two quarter notes equal one beat. Look at the length of the notes to decide which time signature seems best. 
For instance, if most of the notes are quarter notes and half notes, it may make sense to have the quarter note take the beat. If more are eighth notes, it may make sense to have the eighth note take the beat, for example, if the notes are two quarter notes, a half note, and a half rest, the time signature could be six quarters or twelve eighths. In six quarters, the quarter note would get the beat, in twelve eighths, the dotted half note would, but you typically see more eighth notes in that time signature as one beat is equal to three eighth notes. In this case, six quarters likely makes more sense. If the notes are two half notes and two quarter notes, that could be 2.5, 2, 5 quarters, or 10 eighths. You shouldn't use decimals, so 2.5, 2 is out. 10 eighths doesn't make a lot of sense because you don't have any eighth notes, so 5 quarters is the most likely, where you're counting quarter notes as one beat. Aim for the longest note value possible when counting the beats. Typically, when deciding on a time signature, try to count the longest note value as the bass beat. For instance, count half notes as the beat if you can, but if that doesn't make sense, move on to counting quarter notes as the beat. In the example of two half notes and two quarter notes, 2.5, 2 would count the half note as the beat, but since no decimals are allowed, choose the next longest beat, which would be the quarter note. Examine how the eighth notes are grouped to help decide between 4 and 8. When the bottom number of the signature is 4, the eighth notes are often grouped by twos, connected at the top with their flags. On the other hand, if the eighth notes are in groups of threes, that usually means the bottom number of the time signature is 8 instead. Start by finding the main pulse or beat. When you're listening to a song, you may start tapping your foot or nodding your head to the beat. This beat is referred to as the pulse, what you count to when playing the song. Start by just finding this beat and tapping along with it. See if you can hear an emphasis on certain beats from the percussion. Often, the even beats are given an extra thump or sound, particularly in rock or pop music. So for instance, you may be hearing thump, 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 thump as the beat, but then on top of that, you hear an extra bit on some beats, such as paw thump, thump, paw thump, thump, many times, the first beat in the measure will be given a stronger emphasis, to try to listen for that, as well. Listen for the backbeats to have an emphasis from other instruments. Even though the drums will often hit the even beats, other instruments in the song may hit the backbeats or the odd beats. So while you may hear a more solid thudding on the even beats, listen for the other beats to have emphasis elsewhere. Check for major changes on the first beat of the measure. For instance, you may hear chord changes on the first beat of most measures. Alternatively, you may hear other changes, like melody movement or harmony changes. Often, the first note of the measure is where major changes in the song happen. Similarly, the first beat of the measure is often hit just a bit harder than the rest of the measure. It can help to listen for strong and weak notes. For instance, the beats for duple time, two quarters and six eighths, are strong weak. The beats for triple time, three quarters and nine eighths, are strong weak weak, while for quadruple time, four quarters or C for common time and twelve eighths, they're strong weak medium weak. Try to hear how the beats are grouped based on the cues. For instance, you may notice beats are grouped in twos, threes, or fours. Count the beats out if you can. Listen for the first beat in each measure, then count out the notes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, etc., until you hear the first beat of the next measure. Choose the most likely time signature for the song.
If you are hearing four strong beats in a measure, you likely have a four-quarters time signature as that's the most common in pop, rock, and other popular music. Remember, the bottom four tells you the quarter note gets the beat, and the top four tells you that you have four beats in each measure. If you feel two strong beats but also hear notes in triples behind it, you might have a six-eighths time, which is counted in twos but each one of those beats can be divided into three-eighth notes. Two-quarters time is most often used in polkas and marches. You may hear om pa pa, om pa pa in this type of song, where the om is a quarter note on the first beat and the pa pa is two-eighth notes on the second beat. Another possibility is three quarters, which is often used in waltzes and minuets. Here, you'll hear three beats in the measure, but you won't hear the triplets you do in six-eighths a triplet is three-eighth notes. <laughs> 